ladies and gentlemen, um, I am the first speaker of the proposition side, and today's motion is this house believes that democracy is not the best form of government. And according to the wordictionary.com, we define democracy as the government by the people exercised either directly or through elected representatives. In order to win today's debate, we are going to prove that democracy is not the best form of government, and we are going to do this by pointing out the fallacies of democracy and suggesting a different alternative that's better than democracy. So before I go on to my points, I would first like to give you a world map of what our side of the house is going to make. The first speaker, which is me, is going to give you the first and second arguments. Which the first point is that democracy easily leads to mob mobocracy, which means the domination by a crowd. And the second point is that democracy doesn't always work in every country. The second speaker, Shim Young, is going to give you the third point, which is democracy leads to inefficiency. And our final speaker, Hamin, is going to solve our points and give you the reason why we want today's debate. So my, I will move on to my first point, which is that democracy can easily lead to mobocracy. The reason democracy can occur in democracies is because the power to rule the government has fallen on the wrong hands. The citizens who are vulnerable to false information and thereby they are likely to make irrational decisions based on their emotions rather than um, reasonable grounds. A representative example of this is the case of Macau disease. And according to a user named Jeff00210, he said that Macau disease is epidemic disease, and it can be passed through just by touching the carrier's blood, and that applies to every single object and cattle. However, this is just. <laughs> <laughs> However, this is just a myth, and science proved that MC uh, Macau disease cannot be transmitted through just by touching the post. And a user named S. PSYKE97 said that U.S. should stop exporting what might cost millions of lives. And this, actually, less than 10 people die in the whole world annually by Macau disease. And as seen in this example, people are, are easily affected by false information, and thus they make irrational decisions based on their emotions. And however, um, this kind of fallacies in democracy can be complemented by adopting the start points of other forms of government, such as oligarchy. Oligarchy means a form of government in which intelligent people rule the country. And these intelligent people... Okay, well, sir. What do you mean by intelligent? Can you elaborate that? Yes, I am going to. The, these intelligent people are less vulnerable to these false information because they have thorough knowledge of what's wrong and what's myth, as I mentioned before. So they are like... They are not likely to make irrational decisions, unlike the citizens in our democracy. And my second point is that democracy. Why, sir? I'm sorry. Democracy is not a solution for some countries. In order for a democracy to work, there has to be two factors that is satisfied. The first factor is the large middle group, but middle class who can represent the large, huge group of people who share the same interests and values. And the second point is the will, people's willingness to voice their opinions freely and without any with, uh, oppression. However, um, in some countries, these two factors cannot be met. Um, for example, in Iraq, these, um, in Iraq the, this, since the destruction of Samara Shrine, many middle class people has moved in, has left Iraq at a rate of 7.3% annually. And also because of the host, hostile, sorry, hostile um, situation in Iraq, people are unwilling to voice their opinions. Therefore, democracy is impractical in some countries like Iraq, and this is not very, can be seen as a very good form of government. However, if you compare to this with other forms of government, for example, as Oligarchy, as I mentioned before, in oligarchy, it only requires a few intelligent people to make the rational decisions for their citizens, and this can be applied to more countries than democracy. So to sum up, my first point was that 
Um, citizens were vulnerable to false and fabricated information, and they're likely to make irrational decisions. And secondly, um, I said that democracy is not applicable in many countries. So therefore, democracy is inferior to other kinds of other forms of government in these two aspects. And therefore, that is why our house wins today's debate. And our next speaker, Shim Young, is going to give you our third vote. Okay, Dong Suk is the first speaker for the opposition side. Let's welcome him. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we are here at the podium to, to debate the, me the motion where the most uh, widespread form of government around the world, <coughs> democracy is the best form of government. Currently, there are 200, 200, 123 democratic governments around the world, and the number of democratic government is keep increasing according to the UN report. Uh, in, order to, in order for us to win today's debate, our side, of the, our side of the house must prove that democracy is the most efficient and politically stable form of government. In order for propositions to win today's debate, they must show judges and us that the shortcomings of the democracy out overweighs the benefit that democracy gave us. We showing the alternatives that can possibly and perfectly uh, replace the democracy. Uh, our side of the house strongly believes that democracy is indeed the best form of political, sy political system and there is in three aspects. I, the first speaker, will argue that democracy is the best form of government in, in ensuring the people's rights. The second speaker, Arin, will state that democracy uh, brings prosperity and peace to the world. Finally, Yushin will sum up today's debate and tell you why we have won today's debate. Before I make, make my first argument, let me, let me give you some rebuttal for what the proposition has uh, made up. Uh, I will rebuild the mob of later and about the elite oligarchy. Um, from the Greek ancient time, Plato has supported the uh, oli uh, elite oligarchy, but he, but he actually did not believe in the possibility of the use of the oligarchy because it was simply impossible to have a person who is emotionally, emotionally, um, emotionally have a neutral effect, neutral, and no, can, sir. no sir, neutrally and without affecting by emotion. That is just impossible. And about the uh, no, and about the Iraq example, Iraq is still in the process of becoming a democracy, so it, it is not the best example that you can give. Now, efficient. No, sir. Um, efficient is regarding with the task. And the task of function of government, as defined by Edmund Burke, is, uh, is, the, is to provide human wants and needs. And democracy is the government that is most uh, efficient in reflecting all individuals' needs and wants. Democracy allows people to have direct say in, the, in who governs them, via votes, cast by every adult member and the, by the populace. It ensures that a government is made up of those who tr truly represent the p p people and ensures that no minority, no elite or military power can oppress them. Uh, about democracy, uh, yes? You mentioned that in a democracy it can reflect every citizen's opinion. But what if those citizens' opinions are like bribed by the false information? I will tell you about that. Sit down. <laughs> um, now, we're talking about 2008. We're talking about now. And public are not stupid. We are not stupid. We're intelligent. intelligent. And people are kept informed by newspaper, academics, scientists, internet. And, yes. What it, isn't, but isn't that the point that Wong was writing up? Yes, that? but the media oh. could media has its own opinions and that the newspapers have their own opinions and that people are influenced by those opinions. 
Yes, but they are. But there is various different information from the area and from the professionals and academics, and that gives uh, that gives people a uh, fully capable of making an intelligent decision. What is more is the will of the people is far more representative of diverse group in society that, that are um, ruled by elite uh, who have no understanding of various life, diverse life of people. Uh, if we accept that we all have the same rights, then it follows that we should have um, we should all have same uh, rights to equal say in the government and how do we, how we govern. Ladies and gentlemen, democracy has is achievement throughout the history our ancestor has made in the polit political uh, system. And a, position, a proposition team is saying that we should give up because of some flaws. We, uh, are you going to give up, give it up? Second speaker will continue with our second and third case, opposed. <laughs> Proposition side. I'll be talking. I'll be t talking about the third and final argument about uh, on our side, the inefficiency of, that is in the system of democracy. Now, before I begin, I would like to begin with some rebuttals of the points of the opposition. The opposition side stated that uh, that people in the oligarchy are very uh, that the people in the oligarchy could be influenced also by the. Uh, the same things that influence the people, therefore, that those people could not really govern the, uh, the government as well. But those people were, those people would be chosen as, uh, chosen among experts in that field, such as politics or, the, or like economics or other like, respective fields like art, agriculture or whatever. And so they would have, they would be less prone. Because people couldn't couldn't be perfectly uh, PLI, sir. No, no, sir. Couldn't be perfectly immune to those emotional impulses. However, those people would be less prone. That's why we think that that would be a better system of government. Now, uh, he also stated that the me the people are well informed due to the media and the newspapers about political issues, so they would make reasonable decisions. But the but by just by watching the news, you can know that this is not true. But the news itself tells you that people are being influenced wrongly by other different parts of the media. That, uh, like the like <coughs> teenagers getting into pol political decisions or making de uh, making demonstrations or rallies on subjects that they don't really deeply understand. Do I, sir? No, sir. Now, now that I've rebutted the opposition's uh, opinions, I will. I'll get into my main argument, which is that certain aspects of dem democracy are inefficient and inefficient politically and economically. Now, democracy is very bureaucratic, which means that it is made up of very, uh, it's made up of a lot of stages and very complex. Now, because of this complexity, to pass a single law or policy, uh, one must negotiate with numerous representatives from different political parties or different regions, or even civil rights groups or whatever. And this inhibits, this inhibits, uh, quick, uh, this inhibit, inhibits political decisiveness when making policies or laws. Now, uh, an example of this would be the issues that we, we debate a lot, such as uh, gun control laws, abortion, all these laws in, the, in a democratic, society, you have to take into account different values of different uh, groups, different cultures, or different people with different interests. That's why it was almost impossible to get to a really firm conclusion on these issues. <coughs> this makes, this makes uh, like, 
policy making or political decision making in democracy very ineffective and inefficient. Now this kind of inefficiency is also effect has an effect on the economy. Uh, Why, sir? Yes, sir. Do you have any alternative to fix that inefficiency of the um, democracy? So that's what we're saying is basically that kind of uh, like you know so many political parties, so many political opinions. We should make it into like an oligarchy with different <coughs> people and with the people united by the cause, so they would be able to you know come to a decision quicker without you allow, allowing such freedom to everybody. Okay. Now, the sluggish political system of democracy uh, makes it so that economic reforms or policies can't be made quickly and efficiently. Now, uh, also the people who have different interests and varying political views make such policy making difficult, as I stated earlier. Now, an example of this would be the FDA agreements that have been going on with uh, Korea and US. When the government tries to make a move on this on this issue, certain certain political parties complain, or certain political parties uh, issue a different like a different position on that issue, so they want to make their opinions heard. So that makes the diff government very difficult. Uh, that makes it for the government very difficult to come to any really decisive decision. Now, uh, now. I will give you the example of China, which has a people's republic, which means that it is a single party system with a single political party controlling the government. Now this, gov now this system makes it so that people could come, the government could come to political, uh, economical decisions and political decisions very quickly and decisively without having to look at like other, what other political parties would think. Now, ladies and gentlemen, democracy has many and admirable qualities, however, Efficiency is not one of them. The uh, ability to make political decisions, uh, the power, uh, the ability to make uh, political decisions quickly and effectively, that is a quality that is lacking in democracy. Now that is why we think democracy isn't cannot be considered the best system of government, and that is why we should we should vote for our side. The House, thank you. Okay, after our speech, uh, we'll have two floor speeches. So guys, think about what you'd say for either side. Let's welcome Triadine. As a second speaker, I will first um, rebut my opponent's idea and then move on to my second and third opinion. First of all, the second um, speaker of the proposition said that the complex bureaucratic is very inefficient, but we believe complexity can enhance um, more care and more thoughts, and therefore it means much care and consideration of passing the issue. And having pondering um, for a long time, um, having pondering for the thing for a long time, the efficient efficiency will eventually grow up and it will be benefit to all people. And furthermore, um, he mentioned about the uh, he mentioned about the case in China, and I will be talk about China's example. First of all, um, China established an experimental capitalist enclaves known as special economic zone that were free of main free of many of the legal and bureaucratic restrictions that were typical of China's economy and that hindered trade, foreign investments, and technology transfers. However, China's rapid growth is re irrelevant to the form of its government. But China's growth began only after it adopted market-based reforms. Economic performances flawed from economic policies rather, rather than its form of government. In the previous three decades, under an um, authoritarian government and a planned economy, the economic the economies stagnated. Clearly, authoritarian rule paid no growth, 
paid no road to prosperity. To the contrary, prosperity came as the dictatorship, copying the examples of Japan and East, Eastern Asia tigers, like Hong Kong, Singapore, and South Korea's Taiwan, moved away from micromanaging the economy and towards the market system. And I will move on to my second and third point, which is um, the, democrat dem the democracy enhances economic growth. Um, according <coughs> to a paper of Wall Street Journal, any casual observer will note that democracies are very in poor countries and frequent in affluent ones. Between 1950s and 1999, of the 1335 annual observations of countries with per capita income under $1,000, we observed only 142 years of democracy. Of the 880 annual observations of countries with incomes over $8,000, $8, only 147 years were spent under dictatorships. Indeed, if one takes per capita income alone, one will currently predict 75% of um, 5,179 annual observations of regimes. And second point, we are led to believe that democracy and peace are inextricably linked, that democracy leads to, and leads to and causes peace, and that peace cannot be achieved in the absence of democracy. In theory and fact, the more democratic the political system of two states, you like uh, maybe later, there <coughs> tends to be less violence between them. And if and if there are both democratic violence is precluded altogether. That is, democratic states do not make war on each other. Moreover, the more democratic a political um, state system, the less foreign and domestic collective violence. The more totalitarian, the more likely such violence. Um, according to, again, the Wall Street Journal page, perhaps the most surprising finding is that the less democratic a government, the more likely it will lead, I mean, it will kill its own citizens in cold blood, independent of any foreign or domestic war. Now, war is not the most deadly form of violence, indeed. Um, while 36 million people have been killed in battle in all foreign and domestic wars in their century, at least 119 million um, more have been killed by government, genocide, massacres, <coughs> and other mass killings. And about 115 million of these were killed by totalitarian governments, as many as 95 million by communist wars. There is no case of democratic of democracies killing and mass their own citizens. And the third speaker of our side will summarize and explain why we have won the two. Let's hear two floor speakers. Do we have any volunteers? Proposition? Opposition? Okay, thank you both. should be considered better, better than democracy. The motion says democracy is not the best form of government. Therefore, if I was the proposition side, I would like to prove that, say that all they have to do to, in today's debate is to prove that democracy has reasonable amount of law, or at least one more flaw compared to other, or more flaw compared to other forms of government. And also, if they bring an oligarchy in this sort of debate, they have, it's an act of themselves to actually volunteer for another type of burden of providing providing evidence that, in fact, oligarchy is also a better form of government. Therefore, the proposition side, I believe, 
would be better off if they concentrated on today's motion by not stating that the by not bringing up oligarchy, but instead stating that democracy is in fact not the best form of government. And also, it is good to bring out a counter plan if it is strong enough, but I like to say that th in this case, the counter plan was not brought up as so strong. So the proposition statement like to actually consider the fact that they, all they have to do and the burden they have to prove and carry in today's debate is that democracy is in fact not the best and the most effective form of government in the world. Thank you. Um, for the opposition side, I'd like to make some rebuttals to the Pennsylvania prophecy side. And um, first of all, they've stated that people are wrongly influenced by media, and it, is, it can be true, but think about it. Media is not the only source that citizens get information from. There are books. Um, internet, they can get experts in opinions and professional information. This is era of information. Um, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. And also they mentioned about efficiency and how democracy is not efficient compared to other forms of government. And efficiency can be desirable, but should, is it so desirable that we should choose it over representat representativeness? And for that, I don't think so. Um, and also, ignoring people's opinions or not taking into enough consideration of people's opinions can lead to disastrous decisions. Um, and I think, really, what's the point of making decisions if the de what's the point of making decisions so quickly if the decision is wrong or if the decision is not reflecting what people are thinking? Thank you. Okay, Kim Yushin is going to finish the opposition's arguments. Let's welcome her. Ladies and gentlemen, before I start my speech, I want to tell you that our side of the house has actually won this debate, and now I will tell you why. First, I want to do the rebuttals to the um, proposition side. Uh, they mentioned about the democracy, but um, this is not... The, the fact they mentioned is not true in the modern society since, since the media is constantly uh, informing people and even if, if we assume that the media is biased, uh, we can find the information from the internet and other professional books. And, uh, and citizens can, can look, take a look at these uh, informations and they can know the truth. And about the... Uh, and, they, and they also said that in oligarchy, the, the clever, clever people can mm, rule the, um, the others, but uh, these these people are just elites. And how do the elites uh, represent all the ideas of the normal people? They're going to think about their uh, own interests first. And about the uh, bureaucracy Go thing, on, no, <laughs> about the bureaucracy thing, uh, Aaron mentioned that they are going through a process regarding uh, many various opinions. Uh, including the minority, and we believe that this can be a great advantage of democracy, not the dis, uh, disadvantage. Okay. <clears throat> the pro side pointed out few flaws of democracy, but they failed to give any an alternative form of government which is better than democracy. Since we cannot dream of flawless utopia, our side of the house strongly believes that democracy is the most uh, is the best form of government. And now I'll move on to our points which prove this idea. Uh, first and most importantly, the <coughs> citizens' rights can be successfully approved by democracy. Uh, the basic principle of democracy is to uh, build a nation based on citizens' agree agreement. Thus, the government cannot disturb the basic rights of citizens by just, uh, by just their uh, will, to want, will to do so. And second, um, democracy increases the prosperity of the nation. According to the research done by the London Business School, the average investment rate of the democratic nations increased by 26%, while non-democratic nations uh, were below the 20%. Lastly, uh, we stated uh, Dean Babst's 
democratic peace theory to show that democracy promotes peace uh, between nations. There, there, there is a statistical significance which clearly shows that there were no war between democratic nations. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you should remember that the former generation of us strive to acquire rights, pro prosperity, and peace, and democracy was the best policy to actualize these virtues. Today, democracy is the most dominant form of government, and 123 countries on the world are, de are democratic nations. But, uh, we admit that there might be some defects of democracy since there is no perfect form of government. However, democracy has much more benefits than its defects. Also, the proposition sides were just, um, just showed unconstructive criticism since they just criticized this, but they failed to give any uh, alternative that can um, successfully substantiate democracy. Thus, our side of the house believes that um, they are making hollow arguments and they are actually uh, showing that democracy is the best form of government. Jung Hwa Min is the final speaker for the debate, final speaker for the Brup side. Welcome her. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, as the third speaker of the proposition side, speaking for the motion that democracy is not the best policy, form, best form of government policy. Ladies and gentlemen, today in this debate, we have been arguing about the underlying issue of whether or not the majority is seen fit to rule over a government and the efficiency of government, of democracy. The clashes of, debate, of this debate add up to two major clashes. The first asking the efficiency of, of democracy and whether or not democracy contributes to economic growth, and thus asking if, the, if democracy is the best policy. Ladies and gentlemen, before I tell you why these clashes clearly point out to the advantage to our side, the proposition team, I would like to summarize our team's three points. Number one. Democracy is bound to lead to democracy. Citizens cannot be seen to make crucial decisions because unfor unfortunately for them, they do not have the sufficient amount of knowledge, needed <coughs> intelligence in order to make this decision. You the, third the, no. <laughs> the, first the third speaker has said that there is the media, there is the information age, and the citizens can, 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 can find a lot of sources and they have a wide access to knowledge. We are not arguing that the information, we, we are not arguing whether it, that the citizens have a sufficient amount of knowledge. We are saying that the citizens are not intelligent enough to distinguish between the rights and the wrongs of the information, and that they tend to be rather emotional turmoils, especially if it, it affects their life current hey, situations. Yeah. No, sit down. <laughs> democracy tends Democracy tends to get into a battle of emotions up to the last break, especially if that current situation affects one's life, current life. And because of democracy, it often, it often tends to act irrational in some crucial decisions. And it also proves the democracy's stability wrong. How could, sit down. No, please. How, could democracy, how could democracy be stable if it comes down to emotional turmoil in the, in the end? Number two, democracy cannot be seen as the best policy if it cannot be applicable in every country. A democracy could only be successful if the majority is consisting of, no, rejected. If, if it is consisting of the middle class majority and if the majority is open to opinions. These two premises are impossible to fulfill completely, ladies and gentlemen. Feel like, man. Sit down. Even in America, where we consider the most democratic country, it is not open to all opinions and suppresses the public opinion when it is fit to do so. Third, democracy is inefficient. The first speaker said that democracy is efficient because they ensure every human right. That is not efficiency, ladies and gentlemen. That is, effect that is effectiveness. No, sit down. Which they failed to do so and say they elaborated. We are saying that efficiency, it is, uh, democracy is inefficient. It is, uh, it is inefficient because it takes so long to decide on a single decision. It is inefficient because we can never listen to every one of the people consisting that democracy. It is inefficient because democracy is time consuming and it hinders the country's economic growth. Democracy, I am sure the, out of order. 
a democracy, I am sure the opposition team has pointed out some of its advantages that could say democracy is the best policy. However, efficiency is not one of them. Today, the debate here comes down to us, the proposition team, because the opposition team has failed, have keep on arguing that the, that the, that the people have find access to media and internet. We did not deny that because yes, they do have an access to internet and media. But these media and internet can be controlled. And rather, if it's not controlled, the people do not have the intelligence enough to distinguish between all these things. And th there are other forms of government that would patch up the false of democracy. Because these forms, such forms exist, such as oligarchy, as we have mentioned before, democracy cannot be considered the best government policy, ladies and gentlemen. Since that democracy, we are not saying that democracy is not bad, but it's not, but it's not the best policy as said in the motion. We, we did not feel the need to prove that the alternative for democracy because it was not in our motion. Ladies and gentlemen, I trust you, met, you to make the right decision and vote for us the proposition team. Thank you.